Rogers TV. I'm Lori Lydia Loveless, and I'm your guest host tonight on Out of the Fog. Tonight, we have an incredible show for you. First, we have Alyssa Shaw with Make-A-Wish Newfoundland Labrador, and then we have Tia Talbot with her travel agency. So we'll be right back after these messages. Welcome back. Today we have with us Alyssa Shaw with Make-A-Wish NL. Alyssa, thank you so much for being here with us today. I'm really excited to be here. Thanks for having me. And of course, we want to talk about what Make-A-Wish is and your involvement within Make-A-Wish. So I am actually the development manager um, for Make-A-Wish Canada's Newfoundland Labrador chapter. Um, so basically, I am responsible for a lot of our events and stuff that we do, which I'm excited to talk to you about today. Um, so we actually are a very small team of only three of us for the entire island, um, but Make-A-Wish is a nonprofit that uh, makes wishes come true for critically ill children across Canada, uh, but all of our monies raised actually stay within the province of Newfoundland and Labrador. And of course, the impact that you have on families. I know for us personally, my little cousin Jake Anstey was a Make-A-Wish uh, kid mm -hmm. and he had his wish granted. So can you tell us about how the impact that you have on other families across Newfoundland? Absolutely. So um, we'll be talking about it a little later, but I do actually travel across the province and I get to meet a lot of Wish family alumni, but also Wish kids, um, you know, and their, and their families across the province, which is lovely. Um, but right now we have 55 wishes and waiting for kids across Newfoundland and Labrador. Um, so the impact for us, like that, that's growing every single day um, with more referrals. Um, so yeah, that, that's the impact that we have here. And I know that you have a lot of events that are coming we up. Do. And uh, so two jumped in at me right away. And one is the bubble bath. So it's not really a bubble bath, is it, Alyssa? It's not. No, it's a little bit of a play on words, I think. <laughs> um, so it's called the Ice Bubble Bath. Um, so it's our fourth annual challenge that we're doing for that. It's happening on April 12th at Topsail Beach at 2 p.m. if you want to sign up. Um, but it's uh, basically it's just a challenge. Um, it's like a polar dip. Um, so it's the same kind of concept as that. Um, and it's kind of a stance on taking like celerity with Wish Kids and their families. Um, so, you know, they go through a lot worse things and just jumping in the ocean in April. Now it is cold here in Newfoundland for sure, um, but it's it's basically just a challenge. People donate to um, participants, um, and in order to sign up, you go to makeawish.ca slash ice bubble bath. And how many people do you have doing the ice bubble bath right now? Right now, I think we have, last time I checked was yesterday, it was uh, 15 people that were signed up. Wow. Um, but we do have a goal of raising $10,000, um, and $10,000 is the average cost of a wish. So we're hoping to grant at least one wish with everybody jumping in the water. Um, so I'll tell you a funny story about that actually. Um, my first day on the job at Make-A-Wish was April Fool's Day. And it was during our ice bubble bath three years ago. Um, and my boss at the time had told me that it was uh, part of my initiation in order to, you know, stay on the job. Um, I did not participate in the ice bubble <laughs> bath, um, but I still kept my job, so that's great. So now every new employee that we do have that comes in, we keep telling them, this is your initiation in order to do this <laughs> for like Make-A-Wish. It's like your internal inside joke. <laughs> Absolutely, yeah. So that's, uh, it's, it's part of our, our challenges and stuff for that. And this year it's actually sponsored by IG Wealth Management. Um, so we do have a crew from, you know, their office that are coming on board for things like that. So 
It'll be very fun, it'll be very cold, um, but there is hot chocolate and stuff involved afterwards, so. <laughs> That's good to know. <laughs> and of course, you do have the annual um, Black Tie Pub event coming yes. up as well. So that's also an April event for us. It's happening on April 26th at the Capitol Hotel. Um, and it's called a gala, but it's not your average gala. Ooh, tell uh, me more. <laughs> it's really fun. So um, this will be our second annual um, Black Tie Pub Night Heroes Challenge. So each table is actually assigned um, a wish child and you're competing basically for for different points um, so we serve pub food we have a build your own taco bar we have mac and cheese bites like it's it's not your traditional gala um, so participants actually are you're on your team um, so it could be corporate it could be you know random people that you don't know because there's individual tickets and there's tables to be sold as well um, so each table is its own team we play different challenges uh, including like giant Jenga giant connect four um, we do trivia we do all this fun stuff so the traditional gala is pretty much just the attire everything else is kind of out the window um, so at the end of the night we tally all of the points and we have a karaoke sing off and whoever the team um, that has the most points at the end their prize essentially is to help us grant a wish so be involved in in a wish moment um, which is something that you know a lot of organizations you know don't really have the opportunity to do that so it's something that's very exciting for us um, and yeah it's happening on April 26th at the Capitol Hotel um, for more information on that you can visit www.makeawish.ca slash black tie pub night that's great it sounds like an, a it phenomenal it's time so <laughs> and the karaoke as well yes <laughs> and of course we do have to talk about the annual run the rock that happens every yes. summer so how many years now have you been doing this um, so for me personally it's been three years but the event itself has been going on this will be the 29th annual event wow. um, so run the rock is a relay style event that takes members from HMCS st. John's the Royal Canadian Navy ship um, so they they come back to their namesake province and they run from Port of Ask all the way to St. John's, so it's over 900 kilometers. Wow. Um, so they do that over a, like a 15, 14 to 15 day span, um, and we collect funds and stuff along the way. It's a huge opportunity for us to get involved in communities that we probably would not have the opportunity to otherwise. Um, so crew members, like, you know, like I said, relay style, so we have runners, we have fundraisers, we have all that sort of thing. Um, we have wish kids and their families that come out to that. We have, you know, stakeholders volunteers donors like it's one of these events that it's it truly embodies the Newfoundland spirit because I feel like hospitality is very alive and well um, it also has a lot of um, like its own entity around it where it's been around for so long so um, the run the rock crew have actually raised almost two million dollars in their 28 years that they've been doing it um, so we're hoping to you know break barriers and things like that last year we had the highest fundraising total we raised um, $135,000, and that's all because of the support of Newfoundlanders, and it's just been such an incredible experience. So I actually travel with the Run the Rock crew. Um, I am like their mother, I think, <laughs> because it's literally, you're taking a bunch of um, sailors from the Navy, and you're trying to say, like, okay, this is what we're going to do today, and this is your plan. So um, we also have a wish kiddo that's out in Stephenville. His name is Carter. Um, Carter's part of the Run the Rock crew, so he received his wish from the crew in 2018, and now he fundraises with them. Um, and I say that lightly because Carter is very competitive. <laughs> um, so every time that the crew is fundraising, he always makes up challenges. So it could be, you know, if you raise $20 versus I raise $20, you have to do a push-up or you have to do an ice bucket <laughs> over the head challenge. Anything he can come up with, honestly, the crew just does. Um, so they, they've all been fantastic. And we also have um, a community in Woody Point that raises over $10,000 every single year. So it's a very tiny community of less than 1,000 people. And they all just come together and host the crew, give them keys to their ATVs, give them you know everything Newfoundlanders want to give out. They, they do that for the crew. So it's just an incredible event. I could literally talk about it forever. <laughs> and it sounds like the community support that you have is truly phenomenal. It is, yeah. So we, we love 
love to see you know people that come back and other people that ask about the event you have wish kids and their families that could have received a wish like 10 years ago come out and say like this is what you're doing this for and it's so great so to hear all those stories is truly heartwarming and to touch on that so how can families get in contact to you to see if their children's uh, wish will be granted yeah so we everything goes through a medical board um, so if there's any sick children um, across the country, a doctor, a social worker, or their family can refer them online at makeawish.ca. Um, so basically that process goes through an entire medical board. Once they're approved, everything comes to our office then in the area and then we grant all of the wishes here and it's a, uh, it's a great experience for sure. And of course, getting donations from the public and from the community is super important. So mm -hmm. how can people donate or contribute that way? So you can keep an eye on our social media pages um, to see what events Newfoundland and Labrador has coming up. But uh, general donations can also go through the makeawish.ca website. Um, everything is tax receivable, that sort of thing. But referrals are up higher than ever um, especially after the pandemic so it's been um, something we definitely have to raise money for and continue doing what we're doing um, I don't know one make-a-wish employee across this country that would not tell you that they're passionate about what they do so that's great yeah. and so what does being a part of make-a-wish mean for you personally that's a very heavy question uh, but one that I'm very glad to answer so I'll start off by telling you about my first wish story or my first wish that I've ever granted um, it was to a little boy named William and his wish was to have a hot tub and the hot tub was for he the um, condition that he has his muscles and stuff like they needed the extra therapy so hot water was a way for him you know to be able to be free and he could swim um, even though that he was in a wheelchair so he not only wanted a hot tub but he wanted it at his nanny and poppy's house which is his favorite place on the planet um, so we did that and uh, we always say grant the wish first cry in the car later that's been one of our things but there there was no tears this day because William was so happy about his wish. He had asked his mom if I was a fairy godmother. Um, oh. So that's what I kind of tell people from now on. I'm I'm not like Cinderella's fairy godmother, but I'm, I'm a make-a-wish fairy godmother. So that's what, that's what my official title, I think, instead of the development manager. <laughs> I like that title best. <laughs> and of course, if other people want to get involved and volunteer, can they also do that on your website? They can, yep. So you would go to the volunteer section of the Make-A-Wish Canada's website, um, and you would just put in your application, things like that. There's a bit of a process, but the more volunteers, the merrier. We love to have people on board for that. That's great, and I wish you all the success in all your events and in your um, you know donations that you get in as well thank you so much and thank you so much for being with us today really appreciate being here thank you and we'll be right back after these messages your opinion matters and we want to hear from you get in touch with us using our viewer feedback line your direct connection to shaping the shows you love it's easy, just grab your phone, scan the QR code on your screen and take our quick survey. Share your thoughts and let's make your viewing experience even better. And welcome back. Today we're with Tia Talbot, who is a travel agent with Travel Travello. And Tia, welcome so much to the show. Thank you for having me. Oh, and it's good to have you because now it's like peak season mm -hmm. for travel and vacation planning. Mm -hmm. So we wanted to get you in to learn a little bit more about that. So can you tell us a little bit about yourself? Um, so I'm from a small town, Ingley, and I've moved here 20 years ago. And back then I worked with a small aviation company and I just wanted to go back to school. So 20 years later, I was like, what is my passion? What do I love? And I was like, you love to travel, Tia. <laughs> so that was when I was like, okay, let's see what it takes and entails to become a travel agent. So I reached out to a few companies and it was actually TPI first. So then they switched the name to Travello in the last year. So 
it, I just really enjoyed the fact that uh, they helped me along the way. They keep doing the checkpoints. We have conferences, the amount of training and the things that we accomplish throughout the year. It just helps me be a better travel advisor. So I chose Travelo at the end. So here I am, <laughs> a travel agent 20 years later, and I just love it. That's wonderful. Mm -hmm. And so what are you seeing the trends for this year versus other years for traveling and vacation planning? So first I was like, with COVID, I was a little worried. I was like, are we gonna have another year of post COVID? And I was like, and then Christmas happened and I think it was like January to six. I was like, what is happening here? <laughs> <laughs> I said, everybody must have like decided they're gonna travel this new year. I had more sales within the first month of January than what I had of all last year. Oh, wow, mm -hmm. that's incredible. Mm -hmm. And, you know, with myself, I get super overwhelmed mm -hmm. when I'm trying to plan that perfect vacation and get those trip details. Mm -hmm. So what would you say the advantages or the benefits of booking with a travel agent is versus doing things on your own? Well, first is how much time you're saving. For anyone who's booking travel, recognize there's so many searches, uh, figuring out when to go, the best time of the year to go, what you're looking for, for in the travel, whether it's you want to experience summer, spring, because in different countries, those things happen different times of the year. Um, it's what you're looking for, and some people want to look for a culture, some people want to go relax. So for us, reaching out, you're saving yourself a bundle of time. Uh, the other thing is we're free. So, oh, wow. Yeah. <laughs> so why not reach out to us? Um, it's built into the CASA, actually. So uh, when you're booking any travel, whether it's with any company, it's already booked in for a travel agent. So we get paid commission. So when you're looking at calling somebody a 1-800 number and you're on for like eight hours, you have me directly where you can text me and say, Tia, I need this. So I can get on that right away. Also is the amount of knowledge that we have and the training as I previously mentioned. We have always, like we have so much training. Um, I actually go on fam trips probably two to three times a year, I'm trying to at least, which familiarizes me with all the types of travel that's out there. And I actually experience it so that when you come to me, I can, tell you exactly how it's going to play out because I've already experienced it. Giving that knowledge and mm -hmm. first-hand knowledge is really important exactly. as well. So how do you make customized packages for your clients? I know it must take a lot of time and knowledge mm -hmm. and education. Yeah. Sense. <laughs> um, so first, like I said, we decide where you want to go. Um, that depends if it's going to be an all-inclusive, if you want. So this year, I'll just say like, you know, where I have clients going. I have people this month alone going to Ireland, Greece, Portugal, um, Vegas, Curacao, I have four or five cruises. So Easter is going to be a very busy month for me. So um, if it's Ireland or Greece, or Portugal, something like that, and it's a little bit of a different, we actually have people who will work for us as well. So I can reach out and they that is what they do. Like for instance, Ireland. I have a great person in Toronto who will customize your trip right down to the pubs you're gonna visit in Ireland. Oh wow. Yes, and the beers you're gonna drink and try. So it's very, it's nice that I have someone else too that can ensure that everything that's on your bucket list when you're visiting these countries, you get checked off as well and you give that security like you know with me we're planning our upcoming mm -hmm. trip of, of course as we mentioned and I'll get into that a little bit later <laughs> but um, you know it there's a lot of mm -hmm. things to consider and you making sure that you're doing the right yes. things and booking the right mm -hmm. things so um, how do you plan someone you know from start to finish I guess what's the process like as well well, the first thing I do, I kind of like, I like to speak to all my clients just to give an idea because everyone is so different and of so course. unique. Some, like I said, some people just want to relax. Some people want to take in all the culture. They don't want to go and sit at a beach and do nothing. They want to be on the go all the time. Um, people like myself, I'm a big foodie. So, oh, I, too. <laughs> so I travel based on restaurants and the food I want to eat during my travel. So I kind of get an idea of why my client is looking for. 
then I also like where they want to travel because you know where you want to go. Mm -hmm. yeah. <laughs> so you just need my help in getting there. Uh, also, I always go through the requirements for each country because they're so different um, with regards to like some countries you need health insurance, uh, you, your passport. Uh, there's so many different things for every country. So it's ensuring that you're gonna get to that country and you have everything in check. And some things like um, health insurance, that's something that people are like, hmm, do I really need it? Do I not need it? And they'll go and some countries won't let you in without your health insurance. So it's, you know, spending all that time and money <laughs> and getting places and having little hiccups when you can rely on someone like me who's gonna make it so seamless as possible. Um, for me, my favorite, I'll just go Disney trips. Oh. Oh, I love Disney. <laughs> right, so I want to make it accessible for everybody. And my thing is, it seems so daunting at first when you see like, okay, there's an app, you have to go buy tickets, and then there's four parks. For me, I'm right down to the detail. I will sign into that app for you when you are at the park. And I will tell you, you can ride the next ride now when you're using Genie Plus. Like I'm there with you every step of the way, depending on what you want and what you need. That's wonderful, mm -hmm. and it's so nice to have someone, in, you know, yeah. helping with that. So, do you also have, you know, advice or recommendations for budgeting when uh, people mm -hmm. are planning their trips? Yes. So, first, um, the, like as far advance you can, the better. So, like right now, people who are traveling next year, I would highly recommend start reaching out now. Um, this last minute, last minute deals, they're they're kind of a thing of the past. Like you'll still see your, but right now we're on an island. Mm -hmm. There's only so many seats on that plane and once they're sold, they're sold. So don't be disappointed. Like if you have a dream vacation, reach out, start planning, start um, putting money on it. You can also like pay your deposit, take the full year and pay what you want, like every month, or you can wait to the last minute and 40 days prior, make sure it's paid in full. So what's the duration? So like if I was planning a trip, say mm -hmm. next year, so would how early would you recommend that I start planning for these things? It depends on where you want to go mm -hmm. and what you want to do. For a cruise, I would say like if you, the cruise you want, just ensure you get what you want, the days you want off, I would definitely start looking a year, even two years before. And if it's a river cruise, probably even two to three years because they bulk up so quickly. Um, also, um, teachers <laughs> who love to travel during Easter, I would highly start recommending to uh, reach out around August and September because of a lot of, like right now, I was looking at the flights and we are getting pretty well full right now for Easter break. So just so like you're not like, I'm gonna wait till last minute so I can get that. You're probably gonna miss out, mm -hmm. so don't miss out. Um, the other thing I, I would like to recommend is if you're looking for a deal, not to travel during high peak season. That's a good point, mm -hmm. yeah. So like people who want, you'll see Christmas, like you're, I'm gonna just use an all-inclusive, they'll go up to almost, almost double of wow. the cost normal. So reach out early, get your discounts. <laughs> and I, so other things I would recommend is health insurance, as I previously mentioned, and travel insurance. So a lot of our viewers, they're big on family. So, mm -hmm. you know, planning a family vacation is super important. So are there any recommendations or suggestions that you would provide for family vacations? I would, well, first, do it. <laughs> <laughs> Everyone is hesitant to take little kids. They are going to love it. And if you, like for me, I have three kids of my own. Uh, so a family vacation is our priority every year. I love seeing everything through their eyes, like watching their faces light up. So when I actually, when I go and see something now, and if I'm by myself, I'm like, now I have to do this again because I have to see it with them. <laughs> it doesn't count to me. Uh, for me is, like I said, just go and book the trip. I highly recommend doing something family friendly, um, not things that require a lot of walking. As we know, kids get tired very easy. You're gonna set them up for failure. Mm -hmm. So for me, my favorite city right now is Montreal. I love Montreal. The food there is amazing. And I've always dreamt of taking my kids. So I didn't take my youngest this time, but I took my 16 year old and my 13 year old and we went for four days and we hiked and we did all the walking and we 
you know, experienced all the restaurants. So it's just ensuring that you're doing the things that kids are gonna enjoy. It doesn't mean you have to go to Disney World. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you can go to a beach vacations. A lot of these all-inclusives now, they do have water parks, which is amazing. Unlimited ice cream. <laughs> and, Always good. <laughs> and the other thing I like cruises. Mm -hmm. Cruises are so family friendly right now. And we've seen uh, like an increase this year. Like that is probably my highest is cruises mm -hmm. and family cruises. Like I said, who doesn't love unlimited ice cream? <laughs> That's great. And so what advice would you give to someone that's uh, planning an upcoming trip? Is there anything else that you would want anyone to point out? Uh, for me, like I said, it's just planning early, mm -hmm. understanding what it is you're looking for so that when you're reaching out to me, that I can get some idea what and where <laughs> and what type of trip you want. Um, from like, I'll go back to the family trip with Disney World. Um, we have Halloween coming up and Christmas coming up. These will sell out. I always tell everyone by the summer, like you won't get the Halloween nights, you won't get the Merry Christmas nights. So it's reaching out and getting those early. Um, I highly, highly recommend travel insurance, like and health insurance and travel protection. And if I just have a moment, I'm just gonna explain these a little bit because they get very confusing and they're so important. Mm -hmm. So when you're booking with, I'm gonna use Air Canada for an example, and they offer travel protection. That's where you can, and, um, cancel at last minute and you can get all your money back which is fantastic and it's probably the cheaper of the options but it's not travel insurance right so especially leaving Newfoundland like we know <laughs> we can have an aircraft or a flight cancel on us last minute for a number of reasons and as much as I would love to say I'm gonna compensate you right now because you're losing a time with your family in destination somewhere at a Disney park, like have your travel insurance. So that's when you're gonna get compensated for your time loss, cancellation, interruption, and also if you lose your luggage. So I have to say, I, I'm so informed and I feel like I wanna go on another trip now <laughs> thanks to you, but Tia, thank you so much for being on our show today oh, and helping you. us, you know, like I said, now I have the travel bug. <laughs> <laughs> thank you so much for having and we'll be right back after these messages. Thank you so much for tuning in to tonight's episode. First, we want to thank all of our guests. First, Alyssa Shaw with Make-A-Wish Newfoundland Labrador. So if you're thinking about attending a polar dip or another one of their events, you can reach out to her directly. And if you're planning a trip, you can reach out to Tia Talbot with her travel agency. Until next time, much love. This program is brought to you by Ignite TV. Now you're in command. Visit rogers.com for more details. We want to hear from you. Provide feedback on this show or find out how you can get involved. Call, email us, or scan the QR code to take our quick survey. Everyone wants to know about everything Blue Jays. Blair and Barker know what's up. Over under an 86 and a half win. I 